Hi, it's Deb Watson, and today I'm going to show you how to paint a birdhouse. I placed the reference photo over my watercolor paper and used graphite paper to go around the edges. The first thing I'm going to do is use liquid masking. This is PBO drawing gum to mask out the butterfly and the white pole. I use an old craft brush. I bought these 50 of these for $5, I think. And I had a coupon at the local craft store. That way I can use them and just throw them away. Masking will ruin your brushes. Even if you dip them in soap, it's still, it's really bad for your brushes. And it's often use, useful to have a lot of old craft brushes for when the kids come over and want to try painting. So I'm going to mask out the butterfly and this white pole. The edge of the roof is going to be black, so I'm not terribly worried about that edge. PBO dries quickly, and after I put the top on the jar, I always turn mine upside down. Here's some of the blues that I'll be using. You could use, this is cobalt blue. This is cerulean blue. You can see it's a little greener, a little cooler than the cobalt. And here's thalo. Cobalt and cerulean are both very light and thalo is very dark, but it's a beautiful blue and it makes nice greens. So if you have a light blue and a touch of thalo, like there I'm using cerulean and I'm going to blend it with the thalo blue, you can make a beautiful robin's egg blue or sky blue and it's going to work really well for landscapes. The way I'll be doing the flowers is called sponging. I'm using a small piece of natural sponge I'm just dipping the fronds of the natural sponge into my paint. I did wet the sponge first and squeeze all the water out. Then I dipped it in the paint. You can see you can do sponging on dry paper. You can do sponging on damp paper. And this is kind of the stippling pattern you get. If you don't like sponging and you like using brushes, you can buy a stippling brush, which will do very much the same thing. I'm gonna start by wetting the sky area. I'm making a blue with my cerulean and a little touch of the thalo. And I'm making more color than I think I'll need because I'll be using this to make the green in the next step. So don't be afraid to mix up quite a bit. So that I get a smooth wash in the background, I'm wetting the area first. I'm using a silver black velvet oval wash brush. This is a three quarter inch oval wash brush and it has an excellent point. It's one of my favorite brushes and I just bought a new one. My dog chewed this one up about eight years ago and I thought I should have one that doesn't have duct tape to do these videos. So this may be the last time you see my favorite old brush in action. Now that it's wet, I just touch it to the paper to see, and that, that's pretty intense. So I add a little more water and I'm not trying to cover every inch of this paper. I'm just putting some on the wet surface and letting it kind of blend out. I'm going around the flower areas. And I would like it a little darker around the butterfly so the white butterfly will stand out. So I'm going to make the area around the butterfly a little darker and more intense with more paint. And I'm also painting around the, the birdhouse. 
You can go right over top of the masking. So there's an initial wash. You can see there's some standing water at the edges. And I wick all of that up, along with some at the top. That gives me some soft edges at the outside. I don't want the butterfly to be the only area of concentrated blue. So I put a little bit around the birdhouse also. And then I connect those two areas a little bit. Now you don't want to play with the drying wash, but this wash is still really wet. So it's very workable at this stage. Now I moved a lot of my blue up and I'm going to add my yellow. Finding a good yellow can be difficult. This is Minzadazzalone yellow, however you pronounce it, from Core which I was quite happy with, and now they've discontinued it. So I'll probably switch back to Windsor Yellow from the Windsor Newton Company, as the, that's a pretty good pigment also. It just costs more. You can check the pigment number on the side of the tube to make sure you get a good yellow. To paint the greens, I'm going around the flower areas. I'm just wetting it initially with a very watery yellow. And I let a little bit of it go up and touch into the wet, still wet blue sky. And you see it turns green almost immediately. And then just like I did with the sky, I dab some of the green mix, that's my blue and my yellow, into the wet yellow area. You could also sprinkle in some table salt if you wanted more texture. I'm gonna skip the salt this time. And that looks pretty good, so I'm gonna continue on in the free online lesson, I'll include an outline page that outlines exactly where I put my flowers and butterfly. But you, of course, can put your flowers and butterfly anywhere you like. See, and you can even put a little bit of the blue in, in with your greens for more variety. This, these greens are not the final product. This is just a nice loose wash. Um, painting everything with a solid color can be very amateurish looking. That's why I wanted to show you some different ways to get loose color down that aren't all that hard. So I paint some yellow to wet the area. I dot in some of my green and or blue. And just let it spread out a little. And I'm going to speed up the last part because I think you guys have got it by now. I dried that. Now the sky and the grass, everything is dry, and I'm going to my pink. Today I'm using quinacridone pink. I dip my damp sponge in it, and I'm just dabbing the tips of the sponge onto where I want the flowers. I'm starting with a very watery mixture for the flowers in the back. I want them to be lighter. And this is a watercolor pencil. 
Another thing you can do is to take a razor and scrape the edge so that some of that goes into the wet wash. Now you can see all the little spatters around that flower. They'll just blow away because they're, they won't stick on dry paper. That's one way you can get some chunks of color in a wet area that won't dissolve. Watercolor pencils are great to use with your watercolor paints. So I'm scraping a little off here and there. You can also just take the pencils and dab in some of the color while it's still wet and get some pretty concentrated spots that way. And I've used up all my paint already. Sponges can absorb an awful lot of pigment and water. So this is the farthest away area of flowers and it's going to be the lightest. You can keep all your flowers light if you like, but I'd like them getting more concentrated as they come towards your viewer. So that's the farthest away flowers. And for the ones that are a little closer, I'm going to use the same color, just more paint and less water. Now that that's dry, I mixed my yellow with my blue to make a little bit more concentrated green. And I'm drawing in some of the stems and leaves that I see in my reference photo. And it goes right on top of the light green. This lets some of the light green show through and gives you a really nice look. You don't want all of these to be the same color and value. It's nice to have some that are lighter green and some that are darker green. And I'd like a little more attention over by the birdhouse. So I take just a minute to take some actual red paint and dot in some darker flowers just in the ones around the birdhouse. That's the other thing. You don't want all your flowers to look alike. You don't want all your stems to look alike. Variety is the key to making a pleasing looking painting. Back to painting stems and leaves. Now that that's done, I'm going to mix up my black. This is a black I mixed myself. You can use a tube black, and I'm putting the really darkest shade on the one side and outlining the other side of the roof. I'm not painting the entire hole in the birdhouse black. I'm used leaving a line of white on the opposite edge. For this roof, I mix my black with water to make it gray, and now I'm scraping in some lines using the side of a razor blade. You can use any kind of pointed object to scrape lines in a wet wash. This way you get some nice thin lines and it's a nice look. I'm also putting an even more watery gray in the center and down below making it look more like the birdhouse in my picture. And a little bit of gray on the side. And once again, I scrape in a few pencil lines and then paint in a few on the top, soften some edges. And that's the birdhouse. I don't have much masking on this, so I'm just going to rub it off with my finger. You can see the masking saved the white of the paper. And this is going to be a white butterfly, but I want just a hint of color on him. So I take a small brush with some of my gray and I outline the wings. Then I rinse it out with clean water. And while that's still wet, I just pull a few very faint lines down into the white. I 
have to clean up the edges on the antenna with some of my leftover blue. And I use some of the black to suggest his body and the dots on his wings. I also take the masking off of the pole and put a little shading on the right side so it matches my birdhouse shading. And that's about it. Now, if you want, you can use an opaque white. This is Pro White by De La Roni to clean up any edges or dot in some white on any flowers that you feel like are too solid looking. So this is my take on my reference photo and the easiest way I know to paint it and have it look especially nice. Having the really distant light colored far away flowers and the close up darker flowers gives you a lot of interest in this picture. And you can also use the opaque white or a white ink pen to sign your name. I hope you like this. I hope your picture turns out great. Thanks for watching and happy painting.